it kind of gets at the core of why New Hampshire can be such a good place for Andrew, because it's small enough, politically engaged enough, that you get a chance at conversations like that. So there's, I look at it like there's, there's three kinds of people that if you can get in a conversation with them about Andrew, things are going to go well and uniquely well relative to most other Democratic candidates. So, for example, the three categories are people who were Trump supporters in 16, but are somewhat dissatisfied because they they felt like he was uh, promising things that he's not delivering. The, the line we use a lot is, uh, Donald Trump is the wrong answer to the right question. Andrew Yang is the right answer to the right question. That gets Trump voters listening. So when you're at an event and they'll come to your table, let's say a booth, you're doing door to door, um, and you've identified like the wife was a Democrat that you've been targeting, and that's why you're at their door. But maybe the husband answered the door, <laughs> so they weren't the target of the reason you walked up that up to to that door mm-hmm. in the first place. But you got them, so you're going to have a conversation. And uh, the, this happens. They'll say, "Well, I voted for Trump." Okay, how do you feel about that? You know, three years in, do you want to re-up them for four more? Like, well. You know, this thing isn't better. I, I feel the same level of stress that I did before 2016. If they work in a manufacturing job, they don't necessarily feel like that's much better. They don't feel like their buying power is a whole lot better. The cost of medicine isn't any cheaper. The cost of housing, the cost of education. None of these things have gotten appreciably better. And they quickly realize as you let them talk about it. If you go in and you go, oh, well, Trump sucks, so you can't vote for Trump. Yeah. You know, in politics, it's very hard to convince somebody to vote for your candidate or to vote for you if you begin by implying that they're stupid. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes that. And a lot of the folks that we're talking to who voted for Trump, they're not stupid. They're not mm-hmm. racist. They're people that identified legitimate anxiety and don't believe that the way that we've been doing it for the last several generations is likely to change the outcome, right? The definition of insanity do you keep doing the same thing, expect a different outcome? They weren't willing to do the same thing. And whether one agrees or disagrees, they did not see Hillary Clinton as substantially different from the things that had gotten them into the rut they felt like they were in already. And Trump was, if nothing else, different. So uh, we'll have conversations. I mean, I'll talk about my parents. How about this? My parents voted for Donald Trump in 2016. They became familiar with Andrew Yang uh, in a, a substantial way earlier than I did. And this is what one of my parents said to me uh, a couple of months ago. If Yang is the nominee versus Trump, I vote for Yang. If Biden is the nominee versus Trump, I vote for Trump. If Warren is the nominee versus Trump, I volunteer for Trump. Mm. (laughs) The orders of magnitude of the passion, as well as the apprehension, they want change. Just because they're not satisfied with Donald Trump, doesn't mean that Trump voters have given up on the idea uh, that change is desirable. What they want is an outsider who has their act together. And obviously, Andrew provides this stark contrast in obvious kind of competence, uh, a different kind of charm and affability. He's different. The first major Asian American candidate, certainly his Taiwanese background. These are very different things that are obviously different. This is very attractive to Trump voters. So we let Trump voters tell us why they voted for Trump and what has not been so great about it. And then we jump in and we uh, explain why Yang is the answer to the legitimate concerns they often have. The other kind of voters we can talk about throughout the hour is uh, they're clearly uh, what I would describe as 2016 Bernie voters who uh, want progressive change. They see income inequality, wealth inequality, educational access inequality, inequality. And they recognize that a wealth tax is not going to get you where you want to go. Some of them also have concerns about whether or not Bernie or Warren can beat uh, Trump in a general as they appreciate the outsiderness. And then the last kind of voter that we talk to, that's the most interesting, is the non-voter. The person who's been disengaged or unengaged, really, typically younger, but not always. And they're looking for a reason to give a crap. Um, And they're somewhat similar to the Trump voter, except that the Trump voter, instead of getting disengaged, said, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go all the way to the reality TV show host. The disengaged voter just said, you know what? I just it's not worth it anymore. It doesn't matter who wins. So the fact that Andrew is so different 
is very attractive to all three of these groups. And if you take them plus kind of mainline Democrats, progressives, moderate Republicans, um, a growing young cohort, including Asian Americans, it's an unusual and diverse coalition. But the conversations often end up being so, uh, remarkably similar by the end of them. 